Well, we all woke up to the shocking news. Britain voting to leave the European Union. Markets, they tank today. People worrying from coast to coast here. We will discuss what is next and how it impacts us here in the States. Donald Trump, he is trumpeting the British exit from the EU. Was that vote a canary in the coal mine for what could happen here come November? Then Hillary Clinton appears to have a favorite for her running mate. Is she playing it safe or taking a chance? Our political panel will weigh in. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Friday night. Well, Britain's shocking vote to exit the European Union, it sent shockwaves to the world markets, including stocks here stateside. It also cost the prime minister his job. An earth-shattering decision made by the people of the United Kingdom. The British people have spoken, and the answer is, we're out. The first political casualty of this vote, none other than Prime Minister David Cameron. The British people have made a very clear decision to take a different path. And as such, I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. An overwhelming 17 million UK voters decided to exit the European Union. The referendum exposing Britain to be sharply divided. Those supporting the exit, part of the sweeping anti-establishment sentiment, angry about immigration and control of borders. If ISIS can get into Turkey, there's no reason ISIS can get across Europe and get into England and we could have a Paris thing, a Belgium thing. The vote to leave the European Union sending shockwaves through the world economy. And right here in the U.S., investors in absolute panic. Very, very difficult day indeed. That said, um, uh, various authorities have been working hard uh, post Lehman uh, in order to build up the resilience of the world's financial system. And now the consequences from the secession reverberating right here in the U.S. American 401k investments and retirement savings could all be at risk, especially for those who plan to retire in the immediate future. You likely will see that impact in your 401k. The average 401k retirement savings account in this country would lose about $2,700. And for more on all things Brexit, let's bring in Adam Taylor. He's a foreign affairs reporter for The Washington Post. He's kind enough to give us a few minutes. Adam, thanks for the time. No problem. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm sure you've looked through the exit polls. Have they confirmed what many people thought this was about? This is a generational divide. This is about immigration. This also was about people felt left behind with the economy. Or was it something more that we've learned here in what has been a very crazy day? Though all those things are true. Um, we do know there's a very big and very sharp generational divide. Younger people generally in favor of staying in Europe and older people generally in favor of leaving. Well, there also is a very, very big uh, geographical divide in which you found uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland and London all very pro-EU and the rest of the country and uh, the rest of England and Wales uh, all anti-EU and wanted to leave. The public, the American public is coming to grips with this a little bit. Even people don't follow it as much, certainly have watched our market's volatility today uh, and all of a sudden started to think in personal terms of the 401k, but they're going to hear quite a bit about Article 50, and simply put, people don't know exactly how this thing's going to work, how long it'll take, or what at the end of the day this is all going to look like. Give a preview about just how much of uncharted territories we are and how significant what the finality will mean. So Article 50 refers to Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. It was just put in a few years ago, and it's basically the mechanism for leaving the EU. The problem with this is that no one's ever actually done this before, and the way the article is worded is very vague. To make things a little bit more confusing as well, uh, David Cameron has said that he's not going to invoke it immediately. Uh, Boris Johnson, man who may very well end up succeeding, uh, David Cameron as Prime Minister of the UK has also said there's no need to rush. So basically there's just a long period of uncertainty. It's not exactly clear how this whole thing will play out. Well, to that end, do you have a sense that some folks are going to look today at the world markets uh, they'll look at what happens to the pound and they'll say, like a terrible hanger, what have we done? Is there a sense that maybe in the collective uh, next few weeks there may be a sentiment to say, oh, well, maybe this isn't what I exactly I wanted? Is there a way that this can be unwound, if at all? Well, and it's, it's a question a lot of people are asking right now. 
Um, one of the big things we're seeing already is there's lots of reports of people saying, you know, this was a protest vote. I wanted to make my feelings known about the EU. I didn't know that we would win. I didn't know that David Cameron would resign. Didn't know the price of the pound would drop so dramatically. And so there's definitely anecdotally reports of people saying that. We'll have to look, wait until there's more sort of scientific polling to see how really widespread that is. Um, and one of the things with this referendum is it actually isn't legally binding. But it's, it's hard to imagine with something this big, the government not going through with it now. Talk about some of the dominoes, uh, Adam, that could fall next. I mean, for example, we saw Scotland voted uh, on secession not long ago, and in the end they decided to stay in, in large part because the EU. I, we've already heard rumbling saying, time out. If I thought that you know, I was going to basically vote to stay part of a country that wasn't part of the EU, I never would have voted that way. Not just their future, but other European nations. I imagine right now in Germany and France, they're saying, time out. We're going to be left carrying some of the weak sisters of Europe. This isn't something we want for our future either. Where could this thing go, assuming for conversation, that there is no do-over and that the, you know, Brexit goes the way we think it will and that it, Great Britain will leave the European Union? Well, there's uh, two big things, and um, one of them is at the UK level. Scotland, uh, Scottish leader uh, Nicola Sturgeon has already said she wants another referendum. Whether she'll get that is hard to say, but it's, you know, she has a valid case. Uh, Northern Ireland, uh, Sinn Féin have said they want a unified Ireland again, which is a step backwards there. Uh, so really you could see sort of two very integral parts of the UK moving, moving further away from London, moving further away from Great Britain, um, and really UK breaking down. The other thing that's going to happen, and almost inevitably it seems, is that there's going to be other movements for other countries to have their own referendums. The sort of issues that drove Britain to sort of push for this vote and to vote out are not unique to Britain. Like a lot of people across Europe have, have their own doubts about the EU and their own concerns. You see this very particularly in France where the National Front and Marine Le Pen are very, very anti-EU. Uh, you see it also in Sweden, uh, in Denmark. It's it's really in a lot of countries, and you know now it's almost like the genie's out of the bottle. Like now, now we're seeing what can happen when there is a referendum, and we presumably will see how the process for actually leaving the EU actually works. Uh, you know, a lot of people are going to look at this and think, why aren't we doing this? There's there's also sense, and I looked at your reporting, Adam, and just some of the hyperbole leading up to this, including to a certain degree from uh, Cameron himself here, but from others saying this could lead to World War III, nations that were uh, that didn't fight with one another because they were part of a greater compact uh, war, et cetera. Even if it was inflated rhetoric, is the fear of the unknown right now really palpable, not just in England, but really throughout Europe? Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, obviously there's people celebrating in Europe, uh, in, in Britain, because uh, this is what they wanted. But you have to remember, this was a very close vote. Uh, something like 49.1% of the country voted against this. And, you know, a lot of these people feel like they're European. They uh, really don't know what's going to happen in the future. It doesn't help that the fact that there's probably going to be a, a leadership battle in the UK and probably, I would say, a general election. Really, the people don't really know when, what's going to happen and when this period of uncertainty will end. Interesting times. Adam, thank you so much uh, for some of yours. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, well, we will put this in context as it relates to the U.S. and certainly our own presidential election. If you thought that we were just going crazy this election season, obviously not just stateside here. So coming up next, Donald Trump He's in Scotland as British votes to leave the EU. Can't make this stuff up. Wait till you hear what the Donald had to say.